insects, the most diverse and abundant form of life on Earth, a paradoxical resource, one that simultaneously harbors numerous challenges and a myriad of benefits for development. Insects for Life This is the story of Isipe at 50. ISIPE, the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology, the only institution in Africa dedicated to the study of insects and other arthropods, a recognized global center of excellence, a transformative force in Africa's development path, an audacious idea, an experiment that worked. Established in 1970, ISIPE stands as the enduring legacy of the late internationally renowned Kenyan scientist Professor Thomas Risley Othiambo. Othiambo envisioned an African insect research powerhouse that would generate knowledge to develop environmentally safe strategies for disease vectors and crop pests to enable Africa to sustain itself. I never get to meet Professor Othiambo, but from what I read and from what I hear, he was an amazing visionary guy really ahead of his time. Othiambo's idea was simple. Get the very best people, and then, if you have more money, put some buildings and equipment around them. Indeed, Isipe started its life in a converted garage at the University of Nairobi. This is the birthplace of Isipe. I was a BSc student here 40 years ago. It was exhilarating because I would see Professor Othiambo come up and down the stairs, he was inspiring. He was a charming, charismatic, scientific leader. Professor Odiambo was a visionary. I was among that first group of postdocs who come to Mississippi, and those were exciting times. And we were joined by enthusiastic Kenyan students who worked closely with us. We all shared the excitement of helping to launch this new venture in Africa. I think we all found the questions we could ask to be quite fascinating. Professor Othiambo led Isipe from 1970 to 1994. He was succeeded by Dr. Hans Herren, a Swiss entomologist who headed the center until 2005, with Professor Christian Borgermeister, a German scientist, taking over until September 2013. The current Director General of Isipe, Dr. Segenet Kelemu, an Ethiopian plant pathologist took over the helm in November 2013. It's uh, a director general that uh, followed him, just built on that vision and expanded the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the work, the research, the impact and uh, the capacity building uh, of the, the center. Basically, each one built on what what the other one has had. I think what makes ISIPE unique and excellence is uh, the science and the translation of the science into products that makes a difference on the ground for the constituents that we serve. ISIPE uses the 4Hs thematic approach, a novel holistic platform to address developmental challenges across human health, animal health, plant health, and environmental health. Early research uh, in malaria focused on understanding the behavior of mosquitoes. Not much was known at the time, certainly not in Kenya and many, in many other African countries. We have been able to map out the distribution of malaria mosquitoes in the country. We very much understand the seasonal dynamics. We know the behavioral patterns of the more important species. The research that we have conducted has helped us to advise on issues of uh, policy, the different uh, places where interventions ought to be targeted. We already have got tools that can go a long way towards driving malaria to elimination. One example is in Malindi, a major touristic town along the Kenyan coast where ISIPE and the Kenya Medical Research Institute, or KEMRI, addressed the related challenges of tourism, social economic development, and malaria. This initiative stands as one of the best examples of IVM. When the project started, 
the Marilia cheeses were really high to a point of like 45%. But as we speak today, it is a negative, um, about 1% and below. Many communities across Africa continue to bear the brunt of malaria. And malaria is a big burden in this family. We have a lot of mosquitoes because of water, stagnant water they are full. And so we have their irrigation, bush also. So we have more mosquitoes in this village. Therefore, Isipe continues efforts to generate knowledge on mosquitoes and malaria to develop novel or locally adapted control strategies. We want to uh, develop interventions that uh, will uh, reduce malaria transmission in this particular area. And uh, we want these interventions to be community-based. In six Southern African countries, for instance, working in collaboration with the World Health Organization, we are evaluating methods like uh, screening of houses to stop mosquito entry, winter larvae siding, and we feel this will greatly contribute to elimination of uh, malaria in that part of our continent. We are trying to find a new way of blocking transmission of malaria in mosquitoes. So we study the microbes that live inside the mosquitoes. Uh, and we found some new strains of microbe that prevent mosquitoes from being able to pick up the malaria parasite from humans, so effectively blocking the transmission cycle. For malaria, we think we're, we're on, um, on track to, to develop a new tool. But in addition to malaria, we're exploring activities in uh, sand flies that causes leishmaniasis. We're also looking at uh, emerging infectious diseases, uh, such as those that uh, transmit Rift Valley fever, dengue. So all those aspects we also look at. Our research is novel. What we are doing in ECP, as far as tackling leishmaniasis is concerned, is not something that is being done everywhere. We are doing what we call as an attract and kill strategy, developing a trap that whereby when a sunfly comes into the trap, is killed. The other thing that we are doing is trying to map out where are the disease hotspots, where is this disease occurring. And we've seen positive feedback from both the community, because they are aware, and from the policymakers uh, and the government. Animal health is really important. Uh, when you look at most communities in Africa, livestock are really central to their livelihoods, but also to their lives, to their social connections and so on. About 30% of uh, economies are driven by livestock. African trypanosomes are parasites that uh, are found in the blood of animals, livestock, and also wildlife. They are transmitted by tsetse flies, uh, which, which are endemic in tropical Africa. Animal African trypanosomas still remains a devastating disease to Africa. Every year this kills about 3 million cattle and costs in terms of control total up to up to 4.5 billion dollars every year. Unaweza kuona ngombe yako ama mifugo zako ukiona inaanza kubadilisha nywele inaanza kuwa inaparara unaona hiyo kuli vizuri inaanza kupunguza uzito eh? unaona ukiangalia tu unaona macho inalia Sese research was one of the flagship uh, projects that was started by SIPE. Research on uh, behavior, uh, the ecology. So, for example, where do you find the, where do they breed? Why do they breed there? How do they find those places? How do they? What chemicals do they use to to find their hosts? Do they actually see those hosts, or do they smell them first? You know, those were important research questions. By the 1980s, Isipe was uh, innovating in that area, and we produced the Ngu trap, which is called Ngu because it was uh, tested extensively in the Nguruman area of southern Kenya. But we thank Isipe because we were here in the community, we community, we were in the community, we were in the community, we were in the community, we were in ambaye ikitumika ama wakituonyesha imeweza pungusa hii mbungo ili ipungue ndio 
mifugo yenu ipate nafasi ya kuwa inaweza pale pale nyasi ilipo we we had also observed through our research that uh, there are certain animals that sesa seem to avoid I mean, these animals are present in the environment but they are not bitten as often as others so our uh, colleagues in the chemistry department then looked at the odors from the skin and the breath of these animals and identified chemicals that were then confirmed to be repellent so we then developed a collar that a cow that would be worn by a cow but the collar would be carrying these chemicals and showed that we could reduce the number of flies that were then attracted to the cow ilikuwa tatukilima wakati mwingine unaona ngombe anakimbia nyumbani kujificha kwa sababu ya mbungwa na jingiza kwa miti kujificha lakini tangu tupate zile collars zimetusaidia na hata sasa hii ngombe anaizalisha akachelewa kwa nani kwa malisho na anakuja tu nyumbani polepole bila kukusumbua lakini wakati isipe imekuja tumefanya kazi na wao wametusaidia sasa hivi tunaona kiwango cha maziwa kimepanda na pia ufugaji umekuwa umeboreka. Camels are drought resistant. So most of the people here the camel provide them with milk during drought. The camel is a very important animal especially in the arid and semi-arid area where other animals can't survive because of its resilience but it's also neglected by all stakeholders you know if you take by researchers or all stuff so we we start the research on camel to see what how we can improve its resilience during this uh, frequent drought and climate change so they have uh, two major problems one is uh, sura which is transmitted by biting flies so biting flies have been a big focus for our research here with the community wadudu hawa huleta usumbua ngamia kwa malishoni usumbua kutafuta kupata maziwa pia wanaumwa kuleta magonjwa na hawa ni wengi na waleta magonjwa mengine tofauti tofauti sio magonjwa moja in help or in assistance with the sipe and the training they have undertook and they have also trained the farmers they are working with at least they have now known what to how to protect the animals they can either spray and also uh, being using that uh, rebellant they can use that rebellant to control the uh, sesa flight so that it can not by the animals in the highly prolific plant health theme stand out examples of success include the integrated pest management program for fruit flies and the push pull technology push pull came as a new idea to understand how the plants protect themselves in nature and can one plant can protect another plant uh, which is planted with it and that's why we came with this uh, a study of the companion plants we selected plants with lot of experimentation the plant which could be pulling the insect away from the crop and the plants which could be pushing them away and that's how the name came push pull strategy that's modum repel the stem borer and also at the same time suppresses trigger through the roots and then the farming system is surrounded by a border crop called brachiaria or napier grass and these grasses attract normally the pests the stem borer pests to come and lay their eggs but they will not emerge and the value of the technology is the farmers don't have to apply pesticides the the technology provides uh, uh, them the uh, the fodder for the cattle it improves their soil fertility and there are many more benefits the push pull can also control the fall army worm which came which invaded africa and uh, there was no technology available but we found that uh, the push the fall army worm will not damage the maize which was planted in the push pull we estimate about uh, uh, 240000 farmers who have adopted it and uh, if you take uh, six or seven Uh, people in each family more than a million people have uh, improved their lives through this technology so the most important thing for which made me pick up the push pull technology is the striga and then us to know how this grass helps to feed the animals 
at a low cost, and how you can improve the fertility of the land. Now, this push pull, the striker which we have, that one is no longer there. The desmonium, the mulatto, I'm using for mulching my banana, and I'm using to make liquid manure. I cut the, the desmodium, I chop chop them with the mulatto, I put the drum with the ash and water, then after two weeks, I have liquid manure. Push pull technology, uko ubona abantu bayakira ni kwiza kuko nkuko nabivuze iragenda igahura neza nibyo abahinzi bifuza ndetse banayitegereje ko izaba igisubizo cyo kuba bakoresha ubutaka bwabo butoya neza kandi bakabasha kubonamo ibyo bakeneye byose The yield I used to have before the push and pull was introduced was very low the armworms were invading uh, the crops and everything else which was in the shamba. I have benefited so much. The fruit fly, it has started at ECB since 1998. And in fact, ECB was um, identified as a, as a reference center for fruit fly research. We have done so, so much, right from the uh, native fruit fly all the way to the invasive. We have developed um, integrated best management for, uh, for, the, uh, for the suppression of this best with the minimal or no use of insecticide at all. Currently, I am disseminating a package of fruit fly which already has been developed by ECP. This package has several components that are doable, easily doable to the farm. Uh, the, the farmers can easily adopt. They are easily accessible and they are eco-friendly. I am so proud to be identified with ECP. They trained us on the fruit fly, how to identify it and how to control it. My production was higher. My quantities became higher. I had quality. I've not been, uh, there's nobody who has come to my farm and said, sorry, we are not taking your product because it has this all out. So I feel I've been very much empowered by this. Yes, I have been empowered as a woman. One of ECP's major breakthroughs is the unearthing of the chemical language that governs the swarming behavior of the desert locust. This knowledge formed a novel way of disrupting the social structure of these devastating insects, reverting them to harmless, solitarious individuals. And against the backdrop of one of the most severe desert locust outbreaks in Eastern Africa that started in 2019, Isipe has contributed to combating the menace, while also exploiting the beneficial use of locust in food and feed and high-quality oils. Isipe boasts one of the strongest and most effective biopesticide development programs in Africa. Currently, three Isipe biopesticides have been commercialized and are being used on various crop pests, including invasive species like the fall armyworm and the leaf miner, Tuta absoluta. We are the major bee research uh center that you will find on the African continent. We are an OIE collaborating center. The OIE is the World Animal Health Organization. And we are a collaborating center for bee health in Africa. 75% of the species, of the plant species that we use for our own nutrition are dependent on insect pollination. There's a lot of uh, gaps in our knowledge about bees and pollination in Africa, which we're trying to fill. And there's still the opportunities to protect and maintain bees because uh, the environment is so rich in biodiversity. This uh, honey is five times more expensive compared to what uh, is the cost of honey from honeybee. And uh, these bees also are also good pollinators. They pollinate uh, better than uh, the honeybee in the sense that they are more efficient in uh, setting uh, fruit and also in uh, setting uh, yield. So uh, ECP has been working on these bees for the past uh, 10 years. 
to try to domesticate them. We are trying to start off with uh, research on nutrition of bees, which is quite important. Also, uh, again, uh, then a feedback to the bee health. And we do some uh, research on endosymbionts and the microbiome. These are the bacteria that the bees harbor in the gut. So the idea is to understand what are the beneficial roles of the, of the gut microbes in the bees, for example, to enhance their production and also to enhance their protection against common pathogens that now are worldwide distributed. Since 1995, ICIPE has implemented beekeeping and silk rearing projects in 19 countries in Africa, the Near East and North Africa, and in four Indian Ocean island nations with tremendous success. In 2016, Isipe joined forces with Mastercard Foundation to create dignified jobs for young people in Ethiopia. Uh, when I met the Isipe, I wanted one thing. That one thing is, uh, how can you translate your technology into action? Yes, you have done good on honey apiculture, you have done good on sericulture, but we want, it, we want it for use employment opportunities. The initial project was, yes, use employment on silk and honey project, was funded for about 10 million, five years, and to take 12,500 young people into business opportunities. Uh, four years down the line, it happened, and we have been successfully implementing it. Moyesh means more opportunities for the use using honey and the silk value chains. In the coming five years, we are planning to create direct jobs for 100,000 youth in Ethiopia using silk and honey value chains. The Moyesh project works with national partners. So we work with the Ministry of Agriculture and also we work with line ministries as well as with, um, um, with local authorities in different regions in terms of youth recruitment, youth training, and supplying youth with starter kits to establish their activities. <laughs> in the late 1990s, Isipe commenced bioprospecting research aimed to discover, develop, and commercialize natural products for pest and vector management that would be appropriate for use by rural communities. The goal was also to create new avenues for income generation by communities living adjacent to biodiversity-rich areas. The most expensive ingredient in food is protein, and the most common source of protein is fish meal. Insects offer a great alternative to fish meal. ECP has developed state-of-the-art technology for mass production of insects as high quality protein sources to replace the expensive fish meal and soya beans. Key uh, activity that ACP has done to, to forge this uh, area is uh, to engage with the policy makers in Eastern Africa, especially Kenya and Uganda, and to come up with standards that, can be, that has been currently gazetted to include insects in the animal feeds. Isipe has trained many farmers and most of these farmers are mass-rearing these insects for commercial purposes. Our aim is to create high-value protein from local organic waste. We do this using the black soldier fly larvae, which can convert organic waste into protein. We received our starter kits from Isipe and we're receiving technical backstopping from them as well. Replacing conventional protein sources by 5 to 15% of black soldier fly larvae feed in the entire poultry sector of Kenya can increase the national gross domestic product by up to 206 million US dollars per year and massively decrease foreign currency spending. Um, then the residue is very rich in nutrients and so it's very good in the crop production as well as um, enhancing the soy health. Also the pupa skin, it can also be used to produce chitin and chitin has enormous roles. It can either be, it have antimicrobial uh, properties. They can be used in uh, encouraging um, some of the probiotic uh, microorganisms in the soil. We not only have protein, we also have fertilizer from this. So what's left when they're done eating is this kind of, this loose kind of dirt. And this is very high in uh, NPK, nitrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, 
which are the key elements for plant, plant growth, plant production. If you look at uh, how uh, human food system has evolved as uh, the population has increased, I would bet that our diversity of food that we are, we are consuming is decreasing by the day. There is a need for bringing back traditional diverse food systems into, into mainstream, uh, consumption, for mainstream consumption. The insects which are known to be consumed by more than 2 billion people have at some point of time recorded that they are, they are used to consuming insects. Uh, and more than 2,000 2, species of insects are known to be edible. Isipe has also developed mass rearing technologies of insects for food. Insects are very rich in crude protein, ranging between 35 to 73 percent, which is superior to that of beef, fish and many other plant protein sources. Insects are also very rich in amino and fatty acids, as well as several micronutrients. Isipe has also developed technologies to extract high-quality oils from insects. Africa is not deprived of talent. There are a lot of bright people, but that support infrastructure has to be created there for these people to really meet their uh, full potential. So ICP has really uh, an amazing culture uh, and commitment to impact and to contributing also to generating uh, the next uh, best scientists uh, that can uh, not only serve uh, the continent, but also serve uh, the planet. The African Regional Postgraduate Programme in Insect Science, or ARPIS, is ISIPE's flagship postgraduate training programme. Launched in 1983, ARPIS is undoubtedly one of the most significant landmarks in Africa's effort of nurturing and retaining young African talent. ARPIS is complemented by the Dissertation Research Internship Programme, or DRIP. Together, these two programs have trained 723 PhD and MSc scholars from 34 African countries since 1983. 41% of all postgraduate scholars trained at ISIPE since 1983 were women. 74% of ARPIS PhD alumni are active in Africa and almost all are working in research, development or higher education. 24 African countries are currently represented in ISIPE postgraduate and postdoctoral training programs. 15 non-African countries are currently represented in ISIPE postgraduate and postdoctoral training programs. 36 postdoctoral fellows conducted research at ISIPE between 2014 and 2019. Most of our trained uh, students love to come back and work with the, with the scientists here. We trained also farmers, we trained uh, extension officers, so this is at different levels. We try to bring in uh, gender balancing between male and female farmers. Also for the extension officers, we also bring both sexes to train so that we can have also more female in the field. Isipe is a, a very effective, lean uh, uh, organization. Uh, so we cannot do, we couldn't do all the things we do without part partners. So we have actively engaged about 300 partner organizations globally. Our funders are also extremely important partners uh, who have who have made a lot of our uh, scientific ideas and, uh, and uh, ambitions uh, 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 to, to a reality. Finance really is the blood of an organization and by being very clear cut that uh, we are absolutely going to handle our finances with utmost integrity. This is one area where we continue to invest and uh, over the years, ICP has been very strong in developing uh, talent, uh, uh, recruiting the right people, uh, training them, and making sure that uh, they understand the business. 
Over the past 50 years, the validity of the founding mission of ISIPE, that of a center of excellence devoted to insect science as a basis for better agricultural production, better health and better livelihoods, has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. As ISIPE moves towards the next phase, the center will be guided by its vision and strategy for 2021 to 2025. Its goals include continued threat of invasive species, global decline in insects and biodiversity, neglected critical areas of insect sciences, microbiome research, soil health, and efforts towards a One Health approach across the center's 4-H themes. A center like ISIPE is absolutely essential for the world in the very complex uh, era which is coming ahead of uh, climate change and uh, pandemics and all those things that uh, now are evolving. Those new areas are really exciting for me. And solving a particular problem that uh, farmers are really struggling with, with our knowledge and technology and products, this is the most gratifying thing one can have. I can't, I can't imagine anything more exciting than solving a problem for the mass and for our, uh, for our people.